It's no longer physical, digital, it's just the experience. It's just retailing, it's just shopping. I want to talk a little bit around where we are today. And it's interesting as I look at it, the audience, how many people are actually on devices. The line between the physical and the digital has blurred. In fact, I, you know, I'll say in this presentation, it's no longer there. It's actually almost not meaningful. We love our technology. We love our, the devices, the, particularly the phones themselves or the, the headphones. It's all kind of part and parcel of who we are today. Some cases, though, it's more advanced technology. So one of the big hits at CES this year was Oculus Rift. Kind of you put on headphones and goggles. Seems a little extreme, but it's a really interesting opportunity for maybe other brands that are really immersive to kind of get in that kind of in the head and in, in the experience itself. But we've integrated technology into every aspect of our lives. It's basically how we do everything, how we keep in touch with others. I love this shot. This is actually a shot from someone on my team, a photo who was staying in London on an expat assignment, opening Christmas gifts with his son's first birthday with his grandparents who were back home in Chicago. So we know, you know, I'm seeing nods in the audience, we know these moments exist. It's transformed how we keep in touch with each other. It's transformed how we do everything. I have a pet at home, it's uh, two dogs. One's a shelter dog, I got her off the internet. And I will put out there that there's no aspect of your life that has not been changed in some form by technology in this physical and digital kind of world as we think. It's changed how we buy insurance, kind of a really complex purchase when it works. You know. But as we think about kind of the complexity of that, again, it is, you know, the physical di digital divide is no longer there. It's part of what, who we are. And yet again, I'll say, I don't know that's part of how we're all thinking. Because many of us might have you know, eyes on a digital role in digital marketing versus traditional marketing. It's all kind of meaningless. But brands too often, I think, are using technology in a really inhuman and disconnected way. And there's some great examples here. I use this one. It's an exaggerated example of a store. Kind of, You can see the technology itself. But there are some better ones that are maybe not so exaggerated, like this one. I mean, honestly. A QR code hanging off of an airplane? Like, let's think about, does that, is that actually gonna work? Or this one's even better. This is a real world example taken by someone on my team. I'll just read the copy here. This is from a store, so it's an in, in a physical environment. Scan this code with your mobile device to access our site and then connect to a phone representative about this offer. Huh? And yet, that's actually the reality again. I think as brand, as marketers or retailers, we're thinking about what is the opportunity for technology. This is not the opportunity for technology. When there's a product there or an offer there in front of you, like how to go deeper. And I also will like think about kind of, we're all going deeper all the time. We're all tweeting. My phone's actually going off right now. And kind of there's a digital layer to every experience. This is not how to activate that digital layer and how to integrate it. This is another example. Looks somewhat better as a UK retailer. I won't name the name looks better, so it's better designed kind of as you think about the, you know, the use of digital in the environment and the merchandising, kind of some of the, the products that are there. But it kind of reflects for me some of the questions I get from my clients, which, can't we put the website in the store? And that's what actually this retailer's done. Many bigger brands have spent you know, millions on their digital content. Why can't they leverage it in the physical space? And it sounds good in theory, but we also know as users, using a website is not the same thing as going to a store. They're very different like use cases, very different experiences overall. So marketers and retailers are pushing technology into stores as separate experience. And that's a perfect example. You have a little corner where there's two terminals, but then you have the rest of the store that has tons of products and associates and things. So, and I'll also put out there that the measurement of these experiences is also static and cold. So we're all, all oftentimes looking, tracking, like, all right, well, who's come into the store, who's looked at which product, or who's taken us up on a certain offer online? Kind of you know, running those queries and then going back and figuring you know, what to do and then going back and doing it. We need to change the frame to be a little bit more real time, which is another one of my points that are there. So this photo I use a lot when I, when I talk. I use it even with internal teams. This is, as I call it, kind of modern marketing. This woman. We don't know what she's doing. This is the blend of the physical and digital. It's not so much about Oculus Rift and putting on goggles, but she's got a product in her hand and a device in her hand. We don't know what she's doing. She could be reading a review. She could be showrooming. She could be watching a video, understand what the product and how the product will really fit. But thinking about her context, but she's in a physical environment with a physical product in her hand. Kind of how do we think about designing that experience 
knowing that it's also going to be used at the point of greatest context. That's the caption I use. In an aisle with a product in your hand. That doesn't get much bit greater context than there. She's seriously considering it. But it's also modern retailing. So the, the points that I'm going to point out today relate a lot to stores, but it's also how brands communicate. This could be, she could be telling the own, her own story around what, you know, what this brand can do, what these, what these vitamins could do for her. So it's thinking about marketing in context of the physical environment as well as offline, as well as online, as well as. So there's a, there's a new opportunity to kind of change the frame, to blend the virtual and the physical like never before. And I say this is the new opportunity, it's what the slide's called, but it's not really the opportunity. It's the reality. We need to, again, change the frame. It needs to be thought as one. We need to stop, I think, you know, a lot of our clients have digital marketing teams and online marketing teams or the in-store team. That all needs to go away really quickly because it is, as Neil said, all about the experience itself. So this slide kind of sums it up. We're in the midst, of, I think, of one of the biggest fundamental shifts. Digital has changed every aspect of our lives. Now it's actually ingrained to everything that we're doing, and we need to actually think about kind of what is the physical and digital counterpart that's happening simultaneously at any given moment. We're seeing the transformational collapse of the barriers between the virtual and the physical worlds. Let me show you a little bit, a couple more examples. From separate, so kind of stores of the future or kiosks in the corner, to actually thinking about how can a product come alive, and I'll show you an example of that. This audience is probably pretty clued in. How many people know who this woman is? few hands. Um, well, she is, I, I will say, kind of, she will change all of our lives in some form. So this is Angela Arents, who came from Burberry, who is now head of Apple's both online and in-store sales. And the reason why I say I think she'll change all our lives is probably no one in this room that doesn't buy some product from Apple, whether that's online, whether that's music, whether that's stores, whether, whether that's phones themselves. So kind of, and the, the quote that's read here is, you know, Angela will lead both our retail and online teams. I've wanted one person to lead both of these teams for some time because I believe it will better serve our customers. So Apple's thinking about it. It's not just stores or online.com, it's shopping, kind of. And if you think about what she's done, this is where she's come from. This is the Burberry flagship store in London, which you can see the use of digital. There's like a, you know, a two-story screen that's in the midst of a physical environment. Personally, I've been to that store, and I think it's a little freakish. I mean, just, I mean, digital is all over the place, and physical products. And in fact, one of the things I don't like is there'll be a physical product here with a screen here, and they're telling two different stories. They're not really thinking about, again, the blend. They're both there, present. But she has done some interesting things, and it's clear to see, kind of, and it will be interesting to see where she's going with that. There's also another quote, and I'm gonna read this because it speaks to kind of the thesis of this little session. The greatest challenge for marketing is that a customer's experience is now an aggregate of online and offline events, mobile and desktop, store and device, marketing and service. Yet few organizations have one executive with the mandate to correlate these disparate but connected pieces. Organizations, brands themselves, are still set up in the service team, the marketing team, the in-store, et cetera. And we need to kind of change the frame as kind of innovators and brand marketers. You also need agency partners that can kind of think along that lines. This is a sketch that was uh, used for some marketing and merchandising, the use of digital. And I kind of step back from this and say, this is modern marketing. So we think about kind of the physical environment, the screens that are there, the products that are there, all of that is media. All of that is telling a story. It's owned media, earned media, it could be paid media, you could be renting those screens out. Thinking about how we're actually communicating to the shopper and also the other people that are watching that person shop. So thinking about kind of changing the frame, storytelling. And as I mentioned, kind of I'll show you a couple of examples. These are the types of blended experiences that I think we'll start to see. So this is some work that we recently did for Nike. It's just proof of concept, it's not in the store yet, but it's in our labs, where the product actually tells the story. So as you pick up the shoe, the flex shoe, and kind of take, check it out the sole, and as you shake it, a screen comes alive telling you more about it. As you turn it over, it tells you more actually about the sole versus the insole versus the, so it's not a separate screen, it's not a separate kind of item, or not you know, asking the customer to actually use their phone, it's part of the retail experience, and hopefully kind of you know, bridging the, the physical and digital. Another example I'll show you is Home Depot. So Home Depot came to us with a really interesting challenge. We wanted to sell more appliances, and that means kind of kitchen and laundry appliances in store. But the stores themselves, as retail is undergoing this tremendous transformation, the store footprints are getting smaller. So over the next five years, all of their stores will be about 20% smaller. Actually, that's true with retail overall. So how do you actually sell products like an appliance 
when the product may no longer be in the store. And that's oftentimes why people are coming to the store in the first place, to kick the tires. So this kind of conceptual example, maybe you have three products in the store, but 25% you know, of your inventory is the most exclusive inventory, and that's online only. And how do you make the store an effective vehicle for telling that story and selling across each? And then also understanding that touch and feel, as you go to the store, even the try-on of the glasses themselves, as you think of it, it has its limits. Try on without your lenses is one thing. Try on, I mean, the, this example we use with clients, but it actually proves the point. Trying out cookware, you can't, you can touch and feel the cookware, but you can't actually try it. So in the store itself. So you always have to make that leap in the first place. So how do we lessen the leap, but still understand that people need to do it? So this was the landscape of products, big appliances, refrigerators, dishwashers, washers and dryers and things. And how do you tell that story? How do you bring it to life in a really rich way? And our idea was we need to do it through what stores do well, as you think about the blend of the physical and digital, do it through what they call the aprons. How do we create an experience that integrates the aprons and customers? It's not about kind of a self-service solution, putting the website in the corner. It's about thinking about making them better, making the aprons better. So introducing what we created was the Home De Depot Appliance Finder. I don't really call it a kiosk because I actually think it's something bigger than a kiosk. And our design idea was, much less website, which is an insular individual experience, and much more billboard. How do we do something that's really big? If you're gonna do digital, in this case, for a bigger product, how do you actually engage in a really big way? So how do you create something that is big, it is this big, that has really high production values, so kind of bringing to life certain products as you kind of scroll through them, seeing a product with actually, you know, contents in them. So this is, these are stills, but there's some really fantastic high-res video on the appliance finder that shows you kind of how much actually can this refrigerator hold. Things that maybe you couldn't really do before and kind of in what are the user reviews and kind of layering kind of the, the digital content that's there in the first place. But I love these two photos because this speaks to the success of, and this has been really very successful for Home Depot. It's been used by the aprons. And as I said at the start, kind of we thought through, okay, it's a digital solution, but people oftentimes think digital means self-service. This isn't intended to be self-service. It can work as self-service to, you know, a, a couple can go over and use it themselves. And in fact, we've seen aprons do that. They've been busy with one customer and they'll set you up with the appliance finder to look through some of the products while they finish with one and then they'll go. But it's also used as a collaborative tool to kind of find the one that's right for you. You can also buy right from it. So, and the question that I also put out there as we think about the blended physical and digital world, is this an in-store sale or is this an online sale? And kind of that question itself is beginning to challenge how clients are thinking about measurement when stores themselves are measured so much on revenue per square foot when the sale might be happening. You might be going to the store three times and then buying it online. So we need to change the frame, which is going to be my last set of points. So the results have been very successful for Home Depot. The first bullet I put there is a, a softer benefit, but it's actually been the key to success for the rest of the program. So we had rapid adoption by the aprons. They saw it as a tool to make them stronger and help them sell more. The second point is really the business metric. So we had a double digit increase in appliance sales, which I think is a pretty interesting thing because you know, these are big products that you would expect to see in a store and now people are actually buying more in stores that have this device that are telling the story. And now they're rolling these out so we'll see them soon in this metropolitan area. We don't have one yet on 23rd Street but in all metropolitan locations there'll be an appliance finder. And they're also thinking about taking it further. So there's a shot that we have and why don't you take that content that we've built and think about what's the in-kitchen experience. So if I'm maybe looking and just bought a new dishwasher, what are the other products that go with it? And maybe I can use some augmented reality and bring the store into the kitchen. So it's kind of thinking through that blend, the physical and digital, I don't think necessarily makes sense anymore. It's all kind of blurred. It is all about, as Neil said, the experience of shopping overall. So the last major point in my, my session here is thinking and changing the frame on measurement. So if you go with the thesis that blended experiences are how we're all behaving and how brands should really engage, we need a new frame to think about measurement. It's not online, offline, it's not impressions or reach or relevance, it's not revenue per square foot because all of these things are colliding. So we can't use an old frame of looking at the world on a new world as it were. And I have two examples of kind of the, the shift here from push kind of to sense. And these are both representations of people One's a little more abstract, you can figure out which one's a little more abstract. But in the old world, and I've chosen a photo that's really a little bit old for, this, make the, to, for the sake of kind of exaggeration, but it's not that long ago. If you wanted to actually reach more people in that old world, 
what did they actually do? They would actually create a bigger billboard, another 40 feet, kind of. And you were lucky if you reached another 50 people that were there, kind of. It was all about kind of size. Almost carpet bombing was kind of the example that I use. On the right-hand side is a representation of people. And this is actually a representation of 500 millennial parents who are shoppers, kind of. And it's a heat map of understanding when during the week are they most open to being talked about, about retail offers and promotions. And you can see kind of from Sunday, all day Sunday, and the hour before work. And it's a shift in mindset from thinking about carpet bombing, OK, we need to reach more, let's actually spend more media and have a bigger idea, to really change in the frame and understanding the blend of all of these devices, all of these moments, how, how we can use them. And I'll talk to you a little bit more around how we've done that. But when are people most open to being talked to about an offer or a promotion? And suddenly, the retailer themselves can spend a lot more time on a Sunday or on weekday events that are kind of in mid-morning events that are either on apps, in-store, et cetera, when they're most open, when they're not at work, and when they're, on, when they're on their way to work. So it's a shift in thinking. So kind of push. It's not so easy to say push to pull, but it's push, push to sense, kind of understanding. And a couple of points to just kind of give a little bit more clarity around this. We all use multiple devices all the time. There's some great statistics on this slide that speak to kind of the use of you know, TV versus phone. The one that I really love is on the right-hand side. UK customers switch between devices 21 times per hour. This is during the workday. 21, 21 times per hour, back and forth, back and forth. It's all behaviors that I think you probably would find true. We're all kind of doing it. But how do we understand that physical digital, what that woman was doing back and forth between the device? How do we engage in a new and different way? And my point really is we need a new frame, a new way to think about analytics. Kind of think about what's going on in the real world, even in an individual moment, or in a store, or in an environment, or in a home, but begin to actually apply what I call kind of digital solutions, digital analytics to the real world. Meaning, what if this room could talk? What if this environment could tell you, as a marketer, are people engaged? Are they not engaged? How many people are here? What are they doing? Are they working on, you know, do, working on Excel, or are they listening to the presentation? So what if we actually took digital analytics and applied it to objects to environments and to people in real time and had a constant source of information. And that's actually what we're doing in kind of this blend of the physical and digital. So it is about kind of thinking about heat maps. So where people in an environment, any physical environment, this could be a stadium on the, on the lower left. It could be a retail space. It could be a bank. Where are people spending the most amount of time? What are the pathways they're actually doing that they're going through? If they're not actually buying the product within the store, let's understand at least where there's the most actually action. Uh, understanding mood. We can understand mood through facial recognition, through different sensors and things. You can also understand mood by asking people. So we have now a kind of a sample of users and being able to use mobile devices and saying, okay, is this working, is this not working? Location analytics, pure, di pure digital stuff. You know, all of you have mobile phones. Most of you have Bluetooth enabled. Most of you have GPS enabled. We can figure out exactly how many people in this room and figure out kind of what is the shopping journey. Kind of, and, that, and that's not necessarily tracking information that's not volunteered. So there's some information that you can track openly that's just there, how many phones are in this room. We can also create a sample of, which I'll talk to you in just a minute, of people who are willing to be part of a participant survey to share this type of information. So as you blend everything that's going through, the physical interactions, the digital interactions, the mood, the sense, we'll get a much better picture of kind of how consumers are behaving, what they're actually feeling, and how we can actually build a much better relationship with them. So some of the techniques that we're using, this kind of digital analytics, is passive in infrared you know, sensors and sound collectors. So tracking conversation, not in a big brother and a privacy kind of way. We're not recording conversations. We're just understanding, are people talking about a product? If, if a couple is in front of a baby seat, are they engaged about the baby seat? Are they having a discussion around it? Or are they not interested at all? Suddenly, kind of conversation becomes you know, another key to understanding, are they you know, halfway through the funnel or not? Heat sensors collect data on paths. If, if this, the store is no longer solely responsible for the sale, people may go to the store four times to look at a product and then buy it online. And that still can be a success for the retailer. Kind of understanding kind of what are people doing, what are the pathways, what are the dwell times, what are the entry and exit points, and understanding what is the overall engagement. Of. So new methods. You know, digital analytics, physical environments, all blended together. This is an example of a big box retailer where we've actually censored an entire department. It's a new department for them, where we're trying to track, OK, where are people spending the most amount of time? And the blue little blobs are where people are and actually having a conversation. 
so we can understand, okay, the merchandising that's happening in this, this physical area is actually working. And then we can go back, actually back and track, all right, is that, are those products actually selling online versus what's not selling online? Uh, we also have geofence data and understanding, you know, as people that are part of this study, where they are in context of retailers. What stores are they going to? Are they going to our, our clients? Are they going to different competitors? So thinking about the blend of the physical and digital, always with what's publicly available, information, or by opt-in kind of. So new analytics approaches will shed better light on brand engagement in a blended world. Again, going back to like, it's no longer physical, digital, it's just the experience. It's just retailing, it's just shopping but we need to kind of change the frame overall. We now have a, a, a participant panel of a thousand different connected consumers, we call them. Some of them are millennial parents, some of them are slightly older. These are people that have volunteered to be part of a study where we're tracking how they're shopping, tracking mobile use, tracking website use, tracking kind of in-store use, and beginning to map all of those things back to get a much better sense of, again, what's working, what's not, what's the mood, you know, we can map it to a specific store and take it from there. It's been enormously helpful in getting, you know, changing the frame from that old model of just putting something out there and hoping that it strikes to really understanding, well, we actually know when people are open. The analogy that someone used in the office the other day was it's like a, a, a flower where it's suddenly open and being open to be kind of talked to around a promotion and an offer. Again, all by using kind of the blend of the physical and digital in the real world. So blended experiences require a new frame for evaluating success. We can't use the old frame on a new world. It's kind of my last point. And I'll leave you with three points to kind of close as we think about this new world. The first one is, regardless of your role, how would your you know, frame and your outlook towards the world change if brand managers were suddenly thought of as experience managers? Almost in the Apple frame. But it's a big kind of word as you think about brand planning or brand managers or even a CMO. You know, why is, in many cases, the experience a subset part of what a chief marketing officer is doing? Why isn't the experience the primary part with marketing being a subset? Because I think we're going to see a lot more of that in the, in the longer term. But really thinking about the experience versus brand, because the brand is the experience overall. It's thinking about sales and service. It's thinking about push and pull in that kind of world. Second point is, is how deeply, regardless of where you are, uh, and what business you're in, how deeply do you understand the experience of the, of, of the products and the people that use them? And my point really here is, because we're marketing to people, you know, to the, even the, the heat map that I showed you before, we're not necessarily marketing to consumer. We're all people on our day-to-day -day lives. Understanding what drives people, what motivates people, what are the pain points, understanding where your product fits within their lifestyle, it's, I, I think, a greater opportunity for the rest of us to really be truly customer-centered in how we're building a brand from the inside out overall. And the very last point in this presentation is, do we all feel, it's a question to ask yourself, do you, how well do you feel set up to kind of target people, market people, and engage people in a blended world? Because we need a new way create, creatively of actually engaging, of making the brand part of their story. It is about online and offline together. That is the point of a blended experience. It's about communications, through to experiences, transactions all the way through to campaigns and back and forth again. And we at SAP and Nitro have our point of view around that, our approach, which is called storyscaping, which is a landscape of emotional and transactional engagement all the way through where the brand is really a part of the consumer's life. We'll talk a little bit, there's a book coming out uh, next month, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a breakout session tomorrow morning. So if any of you are interested, it's the backbone of how we approach engaging with any brand. It's what we did for Nike, it's also what we've done for Home Depot. But, that is storyscaping, but I'll leave you with the, th the final thoughts that I have really on, you know, think about how, how much actually digital has pervaded your everyday lives. Think about all the tasks that you do, and then step back and think about your day job, whatever that might be, and how much are you compartmentalizing this is online, offline, digital, physical, sales, or service, because it's all about a blended experience. So, thank you very much, and I'll maybe take some questions now.